a chance to talk with him a little bit, huh? No Jermaine today? No Jermaine, no. She is, I'm guessing, sick from the weekend as well. <laughs> All right. We didn't get it. Today is December 5th at 9 a.m. Uh, Neighborhood Restoration Beautification Commission meeting. Uh, call to order. Lucas Richardson. Here. Kelly Grevy. Here. Jermaine Sullivan. No. Mary Kay Wilkosh. Here. Kathy Grabowski. Here. Okay, second item is the approval of the agenda that we put together. If anybody has any comments or additions at this time. Hearing none, so I'll make the motion to approve the agenda as is. I'll second. Lu Lucas Richardson. Yes. Kelly Grevy. Yes. Jermaine Sullivan. Mary Kay Wilkosh. Kathy Grabowski. Yes. Okay, next item is uh, public comment on agenda related items. If there's any public comment at this time, none. Okay, um, approval of last meeting minutes. Um, I'll make a motion to approve last meeting minutes as is. Profile. Lucas Richardson. Yes. Kelly Grevy. Yes. Mary Kay Wilkosh. Yes. Kathy Grabowski. Yes. Um, looks like I forgot to take off uh, <laughs> item five. <laughs> Welcome again. Oh. <laughs> Didn't even notice that. Oh, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Pleasure. Uh -huh. um, all right, unfinished business. We have none at this time. Um, new business, I guess an update on the bylaws from Chief Glass. I can start with that too, um, the city attorney just got back to us on providing the bylaws. So after this meeting, um, we'll send that around to everybody. And then um, if everybody could just individually re reply to me with any comments that they have, and then we'll just take it all into consideration, make some revisions, and then um, bring to one of the upcoming meetings and vote them into fruition. Okay. Anything else, Chief? Yeah. Nothing else, whatever process uh, you all choose. Okay. All right, um, next item is talking about um, project ideas for our spring community service day. We have <coughs> kind of plan to have two days or at least two um, topics of the community service day, but I think it's time to start trying to discuss what we want to do for those um, for those community service days. So I'm just going to leave it open right now for discussion, I guess. Well, you have mentioned in the past mm -hmm. that you don't want to touch the parks because of the Parks Commission. The Parks Commission wants collaboration from other, from other commissions. So mm -hmm. if, if you want to join the Parks Commission, they're welcoming you with open arms because there's a lot, there's a lot to do. For our community service day, you're saying? It, or any time. So the one thing with that is right in our, I think in the ordinance it does say that this commission is supposed to focus on um, activities outside of the parks. I think that and we can probably go ahead and review that during our bylaw review, but I think the spirit there was that the authority and scope of this group is not to in, 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 in impede upon the uh, parks. I don't know that there's anything that prohibits like a collaboration, but they want to make sure that the nature of this group, that the parks, that this group doesn't kind of insert itself upon the parks' responsibility. I think that's the that's the spirit of that. But look at the bylaws and see if we like the language. I don't think there's anything that prohibits um, collaboration necessarily, but again, again, it's up to this group. I mean, a lot of the parks are public spaces, mm -hmm. so does make it a little bit easier for us to have a, a community type day to address a community asset. Yeah. So I agree and there's definitely some restoration and some blight improvements that we can make with some of the parks. I think everybody's on the same page I, with that. I think in the spring maybe we take another tour around town to see what there is. You know whether we all go together or separate you know but I'm thinking that we're gonna have to wait until the snow melts you know after winter and start seeing the and start new seeing form blight what is happening you know because right now it's going to you know, it's going to be hard to see in the winter time mm -hmm. 
I was also wondering if we could go neighborhood by neighborhood and really look at it with, you know, a critical eye and do one thing at a time. Well, maybe we should just take a section because don't you think if we try to do all of that would be like overwhelming or what are you thinking? What's your thoughts? Yeah, so you're saying like maybe target an area. One section in the spring and one section, you know, one district or whatever, mm -hmm. however you want to do it. So we look like we have a more impact. But why are we only doing it twice a year? I, I don't think we've determined that at all. We just, that's kind of just what we had done this past year. Um, I mean, I think we're in a lot better position now. I think we all understand a lot more than we have in the last year. Um, well, I think those are, are going to be some big ones. And we can definitely filter through more activity as many times as we want. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is we don't quite or we, it, it, it makes sense, but we might not know what our project is, but like our kind of scope, we could kind of get together right now, maybe okay, like. So our day, you know, the days and the times and what we do, what we need and, you know, where are we gonna do, what, what's our focus? You know, where do we wanna focus? Well, um, I put some thought into it because you said to come up with I feel, well, I go like down to the beach every day and we like the beach between the piers. It's also dog access beach, which is fine with us. I'm an animal lover. Um, but there's a deck there and I've seen and then I've heard a lot of things about that area of the beach that might be given some attention. Uh, that is a large parking lot there, so a lot of tourists pull in there. Uh, they go out to the, the deck. The deck is beautiful. But their access there to the beach is absolutely, if they're older people, none. Where the deck is, the, the the sidewalks like this and the sand is just going lower and lower and lower and they can't walk down to access the water at all because there's no way back up either unless you want to crawl through weeds and there's one path there that is partially covered with bushes and weeds and my idea would be to make one access there somewhere where people who are parking there, because it is a large parking place for out-of-towners and in-towners to park, is one place where they can, an elderly person can access the beach, touch the water, you know. That's, and then the grills <coughs> there, I noticed, are really bad. It would be nice to be able to either work on or replace the grills. I mean, they've got, you know, hot dog remnants from 1960 in them, you know what I mean? I don't know how a lot about fixing. I mean, I'm sure I could scrape it, paint it, do something with them, and I'm willing to do that. But because I go there, I don't have a problem at this time, but I see it every. Uh, can one of those white walk walkways be put from the deck to the beach for access for people to? Oh, that, this is a wonderful deck. Well, how do we get down to the water? Well, I think we'd have to raise money or something because we don't have funds for those. Well, and I think we would have it, to it's all out. it's all yeah. all the things that you mentioned are, I think, good ideas. Okay. However, I think they might fall more under probably park commission improvements. Like, well, so I asked if the beach was a park last time, and I thought it was said no. Uh, that, that would, I think that whole area is Douglas Park. Yeah. Oh, so anything that is public is a park? No, just well, the right Lions Pavilion is is considered a park, and that observation deck is is I'll part of the park. And we have been working on that as a parks commission, but we need help. And so that's, you know, what I was talking about earlier. Oh. Definitely, definitely collaborate and make that better. 
Uh, <clears throat> so just to go back to the previous conversation, the commission under duties here, uh, it says the duties of this commission is to advise the city on identifying implementing strategies directly related to the restoration and beautification of neighborhoods in the city of Manistee, and then to recommend appropriate activities, programs, policies, fees, and funding sources relevant to the restoration and beautification of neighborhoods in the city of Manistee. Um, orally report to city council once a year, sponsor, arrange, recruit, volunteers, manage and execute community day of service at least once annually, maintain a list of volunteers and active service groups in the area to facilitate volunteer efforts related to the property cleanup and restoration in the city of Manistee. And then the, this is the language where there was a question earlier on. Uh, the committee shall have no jurisdiction over city parks, which falls under the jurisdiction of the Parks Commission. So. Oh, God. My thought is this, that we go to a neighborhood and we hold a meeting, get them excited, and we assist. We, we figure out what it is that we think needs to be accomplished, and we talk to the neighborhood and get them excited about it. Um, the volunteers do come to Manistee Proud and, and speak truth. And one of the things that they are upset about is that, this is the elephant in the room, but that they don't want to volunteer until the city starts doing what they need to do. They feel that, why should I have to clean up if, if the city is not cleaning up what they need to clean up? So I feel that's why we were losing volunteers. And in, in what they're referring to is parks, you're thinking? The, the city yeah, needs and, to and other things. Because yeah. what could they do in the neighborhoods, though? You know what I mean? I don't know. Their own, their own places, common areas. I mean, you know, there's parks in every neighborhood, and that's what I'm talking about with the collaboration. Get them excited about their local park, and then get them excited, excited about their own own spaces. But where would we start? You know what I mean? Yeah. Be picked. I mean, closest to downtown or furthest away that needs the more assistance. I mean, where 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 would we want to start? And that's why I said with one of my goals, it should be in the paper and on social media about what it is that we want to do as a commission, so they understand. Mm -hmm. I don't think we fully understand yet. Well, I think <clears throat> I'm all about you know helping with with the Parks Commission and, and things like that, but um, I think we do, we don't want to veer too far away from what this commission needs to focus on too, is neighborhoods and, you know, dealing with the restoration of just the right of way and well, maybe things like what we that could, too. So. Maybe what we could do is collaborate with them is, is if they're going to um, look at a park, maybe, and they're going to hold a meeting, then maybe we attend that meeting and then we talk to the homeowners and encourage them to come and then talk about their own properties and what they could do and how we could assist. Yeah, yeah and, we and do the park itself. In the similar <laughs> to how we have our community service days, you know, I don't know if the Parks Commission has any community service days set up. I know Manistee Proud, you know, tries to get people out there to, to do things, but. The Parks Commission is very hands on. We, yeah. We're doing stuff all the time. So, but if, if something was you know, organized and discussed at one of the park commission meetings to, to set up and plan to, you know, restore some of these parks with volunteers. You know, we could almost do the day after, the week after, and just try to hold on to those volunteers to help and restore so multiple things. We did already have a public meeting for Morton Park, <coughs> Morton Park in the neighborhood. Okay. So I think we could, we could start there. I mean, it's already. It's already started. Uh, so, did any neighbors attend? It, yes. Um, it, it could so have been better, did, but there were some neighbors. And were they encouraged to? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. they were encouraged to get their own space or help with yeah. everything? Or? They were very excited about it. Uh, we, could, we could kind of collaborate back to back with them. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> where do you want to move forward, forward with that? Do you. I mean, you're probably the best person to talk to about that because you're on the Parks Commission, but where where do you see us 
tagging into the end of that, yeah. I mean, would we look at the blight part of that and then what we could do to help spruce it up? I mean, are you thinking of trimming the trees and doing that, helping with that in the neighborhood? I think we ask them. I, I think we have a meeting and we include them and involve them. Mm -hmm. And once they feel they're included, I think they feel a sense of ownership. And so how big of the area is Vermont? How do you decide that? Five. How many blocks we want to do? <clears throat> and what do you see as being things that we would restore in our scope of work? Well, what we were doing on our service day, I mean. Just clearing up the right of way. Basically. Yeah, and assisting people with their homes and whatever we want to do, I guess. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by right away? So like clearing the sidewalks and <coughs> clearing like overgrown vegetation. And it's city owned. Mm -hmm. in, in front of the you know private property. So we can do sidewalks? Just gonna put this screen down in case we need some illustratives. I'm not trying to. You can pull up on uh, here too. <coughs> Just to illustrate, I wasn't trying to. Uh... Well, so, so my idea is to, um, and this isn't particularly in the community service day, but um, the city is working on, or the city manager and city staff is working on a program to. Um, give out to the, the city residents where they can fill out on an app problems and um, forms and stuff like that. And, and my idea was that our commission could work on putting together some forms that would be, do you need assistance? Here's who you call. You know, you could just fill that out. Here's, um, you know, we have this right away that, you know, we think is you know, needs to be restored and they can be anonymous and it because it might not be their home or you know a bunch of different programs that we could fill out that way and then we could somehow advertise that to everybody and then do or accomplish what you're saying is you know get the public opinion on on what the public thinks needs to be restored Good idea. Um, and that could be on the app that could be on our um, the city web page it's just like a, I don't know, anybody could fill it out, you know, and then we could bring it up to our meetings and be like, well, you know, that that seems like something the homeowner could probably just do and doesn't, might not take a ton of effort to do it and they're just being a little bit, um, I guess, lazy <laughs> might be the wrong word, but it, it, being lazy, you know. Um, that's my idea and so we're actually meeting with the city manager, Chief Glass and I are today and I'll bring up some of those ideas to him and then in one of our meetings we can start delegating maybe somebody can work on one form somebody can work on another form and um, go from there I did meet with Tracy Davis who's this is it housing north is that what it is um, and she seems to have a lot of the same ideas about that so she's a really good resource that we can use to um, help with some putting some of that stuff together and getting the word out could you work on the um, service day through the, um, chamber? Yeah, through the chamber. The, the leadership? Yeah. The big day serving you're yeah. talking about? Um, so I'm not on that anymore. I was on that. You were on that. What kind of places did you do? Um, so when I was on that um, leadership team, we did the we painted the um, the rec center, the rec teen center at Sands Park. Um, we helped with uh, the Lions Pavilions, cleaning those and seeing all those picnic tables. Um, what else did we do in the city? We helped some nonprofits. Like there's a cat sanctuary. We built built like cat toys and cat towers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, helped a lot of nonprofits in town, and then everything else that was in that project was like, you know, Nakama or Brother, and so out. Everything in the county. But you weren't under these same bylaws. No, that wasn't even a city thing. Yeah. That's a that was a um, chamber program. Okay. 
Um, and that, that big day of serving that they put together is, is uh, determined by that leadership team every year. So right. it changes. Mm -hmm. One year they did a can drive, one year they did uh, um, like a recycling. <coughs> thing. So. Okay. Oh, okay. Which, which our duties, you know, talk about uh, execute a community day of service here in the city at least once a year. So it seems like something similar to that, but city oriented. So this group could decide if they, you know, it sounds like we want to do more than one project, obviously, but we can have a big thing where we get. We have the two dates set, or mm -hmm. two times. Yeah, and they, they're like a scope thing too, right? One's to focus on restoration, right. and one's to focus on blight remediation. So is the 9th Street um, boat launch part of the park? That is a park, yeah. Okay. A lot of people go there and <coughs> complain about that. Mm -hmm. so. Well, unless no. we collaborate. Yeah, I think. Unless we do it. Yeah, it's almost like we we could, you know, either all attend a parks commission or have parks commission here, and we can just talk about it or mm -hmm. something. And, um, when do you just meet? Can you ever do a work session with two commissions? Is that a thing? <laughs> I have no idea, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> Well, can we set the precedence? <laughs> I, I don't know if I don't know. I don't have an answer to that question. I can find out, or Lucas can find out the answer to that question. I can find that out. Yeah. It's a good idea, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, another idea we've talked about in in previous meetings and. Um, this is kind of creeping into the, the next item, if everybody's okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, so I did meet with the Manatee County Community Foundation in, to talk about what we could do for applying for some monetary assistance. Um, and I did mention a community dumpster, because I know at recent council meetings, there's been discussion about, you know, they used to hit, everybody used to pile up all their trash for that one time or whatever, and then, it was all taken care of and now we're, we're held to the one bulk item and I think we're doing a lot better job of advertising that one bulk item so it's probably helping because um, <clears throat> I think for a long time people didn't really realize you could do that um, but I think a community dumpster could be that one time and maybe it's multiple dumpsters or something that we set out and <coughs> the community can bring whatever trash that they doesn't they, that cost money? it would but there would be a program or, you know, if the commission decided we could use the funds that we have for it, um, and it would be a, an opportunity for the community to come throw away anything that would be sitting on the curb. Um, rather you mean for a set amount of time? <coughs> yeah, I'm thinking for like a, a day, a weekend yeah, or something like that. Just a ton of stuff yeah, it wouldn't be like a permanent thing. It would be just okay. like a yearly thing or... Um, wouldn't it be great, though, if it could be a permanent thing? It, I think you'd have to have somebody in charge of maintaining it and cleaning. And I mean, that might be part of the reason we have blight. People can't get rid of this stuff. They can't afford it. I think that we'd run into some problems with, you know, people not in the city using that, just like we have at the recycling center. So we're doing it one time a year right now, right? Well, we don't have that at all. Oh, I thought it was one no. time. No, it's what, one what are we talking about? The dumpster or a big item? Right. That you put one item. Your, yeah, yeah. But no more. I mean, that's it. Oh. Yeah, it's oh. once a month, the bulk items. And this is, this was my idea to, you know, help reduce, you know, seeing all of those mattresses on the side of the curb and um, people piling up construction materials and that, that's really what you feel. I mean, I've heard it from council members that people put a mattress out, well, couch, but they put it out early because that's what the resources they have is I can't get my friends to help me get this couch out until mm -hmm. three days before the trash comes. Mm -hmm. well, when you drive around, you feel that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we get complaints, what are we going to do? And, 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 you know, we're less likely to write a ticket if the, tr if the trash is coming in three days. And we keep warning people, you know, you have to put it out the day before and, um, you know, Again, with enforcement comes that you know shaping expectations, but to me, that's what we feel when we see these trash items in the right of way. I will make one comment because I was here when we used to have the 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 
Man. The city went around and picked. <laughs> when we allowed the spring cleanup where you could put all your items out, I mean, the, say what you will, but the city looked like a post-apocalyptic kind of, it, it was really bad. Now, I, I don't know what drove that change, but um, it, was, it looked really bad for a while, and then people were down on our DPW workers because they couldn't get the trash cleaned up quick enough. And so um, I don't know what the drivers were to go to the one item pickup a month, but it looked really bad. I can tell you our town looked really bad for the period of that big trash pickup. And, you know, I've got officers who's, who've rendered an opinion that that's the reason for some of the blight. Some say no. So, you know, I, from a police department input, I can't give you any value in determining, well, when we used to do it that way, was it better? When we do one a month, is it better? But I, I just remember the days of when that clean spring cleanup was that our town looked awful. And the DPW did the best they could to come around and pick up things. But until that could have happened, it, it looked, it, your trash was out in the right of ways, what it was. And so, if you think about it, your that program, how it was, is was basically encouraging you to throw blight out in and your see right of way, yeah. It's <laughs> a way to get rid of it, but yeah, until we could get it cleaned up, uh, it sat there. But so if we have a recycling center, why couldn't we have a trash center? Where, instead of people used to have... taking it to the curb, they take it to the center. Well, well, I think then you would get into problems with like what we use Republic Services for. You know, would you, if, if, could you see people, residents having to pay, or would they say, oh, well, I don't need a, a bin anymore. I don't need to pay that on my, uh, on my bill to have refuse at my house. I'll just bring my trash to, to that community. Well, I think there has to be, you know, criteria set where, you know, you don't bring your everyday trash, you bring. I, no, I, I totally agree with you, but there's going to be people that are going to take well, advantage sure. of it. And how do you? There always is. We used to have a recycling center, and I think there was trash. I think um, off Glasheski. I don't know how much of it was trash, but anytime you do that, you have to figure out how can we regulate that. I and mean, we had cameras up at one point. I, you always have people from outside the city or people from inside the city. So to answer your question, I don't know the answer as far as why we don't have that, why we change things like that. Is the recycling center funded by the taxpayers at all? I can get you an answer to that question. I don't, I don't know offhand. I don't know how that project is funded. I don't think it is any longer. No. Because it's on private property. I think, yeah, I think Manistee Catholic controls that now. It used to cost in the park there, or in the, it used to cost. You write those questions out. Answer a few of your questions. The reason the program was stopped was because it was costing so much. And they, I think it was 30,000, 40,000 until the city decided uh, to do a, uh, this monthly deal where you could put your one item out, one large item. The so big the big pickup area? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, so they just got rid of that, that years ago. But it made it good for a lot of people running around picking up that junk and selling it and all that. Um, the place on Kukuchewski Drive, that was by a, a group through mental health or something, because they had a lot of the kids helping over there. And they would, everybody would bring the trash over, the companies, and they would drop it off, and these kids would separate it. But the problem is they were finding guns in there, they were finding uh, big items from PCA, they would throw, everybody would throw everything in there. There would be a thousand pairs of shoes, but the only one the right side. Yeah, right. You could get two pairs out of the old mess. So uh, they eventually said they couldn't keep it up. It got to be too expensive for them. So that's how that was run through one of the mental health places. Okay. So. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, when I find, start finding a lot of guns in there, then we had to cut it out. When was that? Do, uh, you, do you remember when that was? Oh, God, it was over 30 years ago. Okay. So that was involved. So it all comes down to cost is what I'm hearing. It's yeah. really these programs are, yeah, the programs are tough and then how you regulate them and so. So, so on a second idea, you know, if, if a dumpster is not the best way and maybe if that wouldn't be in a, a very effective thing because, you know, you got 3,000 homes and, you know, one dumpster or two dumpsters, you know, that costs a lot of money. But maybe it's trying to enforce that bulk pickup, you know, maybe twice a month instead of once a month, you know, that would be, 
worked something out with um, Republic that we could just have like a half a day of done coming to the to the area and driving off whatever it is. You know how they do the tires. So basically, the cleanup that it used to be, but Republic would be no, in charge. No, no, you would bring your own couch to the dump. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know, like it without so paying for it. Some type of, I don't know who would pay for it, but I mean, you'd have to figure that out. But. Are you talking about like programs similar to like bringing your tires or the paint can yeah, pickup exactly. program, those, yeah. developing some type of program? Correct. I think Mayor Sullivan has had communications with um, that company. I wonder if she might be best utilized to have further conversations about that. They, again, the, the worst they can tell you is no or how much it costs, but it'd be nice to have those conversations, right? To see mm -hmm. if this group wanted to push a half a day, uh, come and bring your stuff, what does that look like? What does it cost? The worst they can tell you is, is it doesn't fit our budget, it doesn't fit our numbers, but at least we've, we've walked down that road. Mm -hmm. And maybe these conversations with the neighborhoods, they tell you at these neighborhood meetings, hey, we wish we could have A, B, and C. Right. Right. You know, the cops are coming here and they're writing us tickets, this and that. You know what would help us is really if we could have the, you know, if we could have whatever they en end up saying. I don't know how heavily those meetings would be attended, but you don't know unless you have them, right? right. What? One of the things that was said was that they were appreciative because they said they never get asked. Mm -hmm. So they do have a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. What if we, what if we um, spent some time and almost made just a really simple survey and you know, use some of our funds to mail that out to the to the city and see if yeah, if they I, will give us some response. I just feel like surveys. I would be careful. My just my input, my humble input is I'd be careful with surveys because typically, if the survey requires you to do something in return, mail it back, send it back, you're it, it, you're going to get people who are really feel strong feel strongly either way. It does. I, from what I understand doesn't really reflect those who are kind of on the fence or have input. That's my, I like the idea of trying to, how do we do it on social media then just use a survey monkey thing and people can fill it out on that's digitally. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. That would be easier to organize than a, like a town hall meeting or something. And then, uh, but it sounds like a lot more input too from doing that. Cause mm -hmm. not everybody's going to show up to right. township right. meetings and, I, like yeah, I think that's very interesting. I mean, that's yeah. public right now. People yeah. can come to it and, right. you know. I think that's a good idea. So, I guess, does anyone want to volunteer to put together some questions that we could um, put on that survey or work together on it? Yeah, let's work together on it. Okay. So, what I'm hearing is that we want to figure out a way to reach the public on ideas and concerns and we're trying to determine what medium we're going to do that on yeah. whether it be town hall meetings survey monkey whatever it might be but we're so we're that's what this group is looking to do is find a way to reach out to the public and yeah, then kind of get ideas questions. on okay. what the public thinks that we sh basically what we we could help with on our community service I think it should be short not yeah long. And we could probably just do it here and then maybe five questions or something I mean, I put questions out on Made Us to Proud, and I get, I get, I get, you? yeah, I get good comments. Comments, yeah. I mean, not to mix apples with oranges, but is Manistee Proud still an active? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Very good. The one thing I would, I would, that I've learned at the police department is make sure that if you send something out, that you're hitting the right demographic. I don't know that... People under 40 are using Facebook necessarily. So I would make sure we use a platform that reaches all of our residents, whether yeah, uh, use the same survey on all of the platforms, yeah. and it would all go to. I one. think that would be a great idea, so just to make sure. For people that don't, that are not even on social media. Too. Yeah, so and it sounds we like miss out on some of that. But. Yeah, our de you know our deployment of this survey, our deployment strategy should be able to, to cast as broad as net as possible, whatever medium we use. It sounds. I think like. the first question on social media should be: Should we have a meeting? Should we have a township meeting? Or township, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, maybe bring some ideas for um, things to be on that survey for next meeting. Yeah. So, it you want them to meet at another location? Is that what you're saying by a meeting? 
Yeah, to, you know, like we invited people here for the Parks Commission meeting. Okay. Um, and we could meet at any... Yeah, we could, at the library. we could make a special meeting and say that this meeting is just to talk about what the city right. residents think that we should do mm -hmm. as a commission. Mm -hmm. All right. And then from there, um, you know, once we have some ideas to, to put on a survey, I can work on uh, putting that together and post it on social media and whatnot with city staff. Then we could use, you know, even Mansi Proud could to share could share that as well for followers that you may have rather than oh, yeah. City Manistee. Yeah. Okay. I think we'll get really good input and because you know we have six, seven opinions on what we think could be better for, you know, restoring the community, but it might not jive with most of the community. So yeah. um, we, I think we owe that effort to do that. You have to be 40 to be on Facebook. <laughs> now, I, I, I am repeating feedback that I've gotten uh, myself from using, you know, the city using Facebook, but... Uh, because I'm pretty sure those people that are taking a picture of the meal they cooked are pretty <laughs> when, I ain't cooked in 40 years. When I, when I talk to my niece and nephew and I ask if, if they got something on Facebook, they oh, give me yeah. a look in, the, you know, in their 20s and say, yeah, we don't, yeah. We don't look at Facebook, <laughs> Uncle. Yeah. So I'm trying to take those lessons and apply them here and apply them well, I'm trying the to learn from you because you're a lot younger than myself. I'm <laughs> keeping up my well, thing. I by no means am an expert in any social media platforms, but I, I just... I talking to younger people. I think it's just important to cast a broad net. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, and maybe to target some of the, the older generations that don't have Facebook or any social media we could maybe put a little tiny ad in the paper or something that says go to this link yeah. or something yeah so do they do that for free probably not no I mean I, I've never done it but I'm, I'm sure they're gonna I'm sure you'd have to pay to put an ad in the paper I think you should make it a story and Kelly will volunteer to write it. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> what kind of paper is that? <laughs> I mean, they should. I don't know. Maybe I, I could be wrong. It's a community right? thing. I bet you they would. Yeah, we could always talk to them when it gets to that point. All of the advertising for. Mm -hmm. No. Oh. Maybe they would do this then. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Um, so I put an item on here to talk about murals. Uh, so I think Kelly and Mary, you guys want to talk about murals a little bit? Well, um, I would still like to pursue doing some murals. Um, with John leaving, John McCracken leaving, he gave us all of the information that would be necessary if we wanted to use it. Um, because you can't just go and put one up there with not knowing who's going to maintain it, who's paying for it, you know, what's the longevity of it. It's kind of all recapped in there. I thought maybe we could, um, you know, I could print that, send it off to you guys, and maybe I'll review it and see what they thought. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is that something we want to incorporate, you know, or not? Or do we want to change something or not? Um, but I think it's important. So, you, so there's a program, like, written is what you're saying? There is. There's all the rules and regulations of murals. And where did that... And it's actually from the city of Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. And um, John had met with the um, city manager, and he uh, said we could go ahead and use that information. It's just public information. Why reinvent um, the wheel? Exactly. So I thought we could just tweak it to whatever would be good for us and move forward. So set some guidelines yeah, before absolutely. we do anything. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, sitting out there, you know, I've had discussions with um, Morton Salt, which they're still interested in and moving forward at some point. Uh -huh. um, and so I don't want to leave them hanging. I feel like we need to put this together so that we can be confident in saying this is what we can do, this is what we need to do, you know, how can we work 
work together. I mean, they already have a whole idea of what they would want to do, and they've been giving us that information. So I don't want it to just sit there. I want it. I want to be able to do something for them. So a, a question on that. So what would we actually be involved in at the Morton Salt property? Because that is on private property. I think the mural discussions we've had in the past was putting murals on public property. So I just want to know. Um, well, we have to ask. We need to go to these ordinances that we would put together, and then we figure out what we're doing. You know, how are we supporting them? What are we doing? Our, and are we raising some funds? Are, are they? Are we going to do? together you know I don't know that stuff those are early discussions mm -hmm. um, that we need to have um, but I think we need to put this stuff in place before we do that because, because if we don't murals become white yeah we don't want to go no. there at all right and I don't think we would want we definitely wouldn't want to take on responsibility to maintain no mural on private property so so you know there those are things that are all in here that we need Okay. So I'm going to pull those up and send those to you guys, and then if you could send it on to whoever, or mark it up and change it, and, you know, maybe we don't need to send it to anybody, I don't know. For, you're talking about an ordinance? Correct. It would have to be approved well, by no, city council. It's not an ordinance, it's just our rules and regulations mm -hmm. of so but it would know. be it would be turned into a city ordinance, so we would, yeah. we would Otherwise, recommend a city yeah. ordinance to okay. city council. Okay, so that's what we would do then. Yeah. Ourselves yeah. Else. Are there going to perhaps be any murals on city property too? I think there already are some. <laughs> yeah, nothing that we've been involved in. There are, you know. I mean, Jermaine is working with our citizens. Oh, um, I'm looking at doing one, but I think we need to have all this in place before we would even proceed with something. Mm -hmm. I think that's the right way to go about this is to to recommend a, a new ordinance mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a lot of discussion with that police the police department and city zoning deals with you know signs and window paint and stuff like that that could almost apply to the murals probably a little bit that'd be a zoning and yeah, not necessarily the police department but the zoning but help, um, no. with some enforcement and stuff on that right on their behalf uh, we issue the citations so that we, we are the bridge that gets them to court if it gets to that point. We try to avoid that point. So traditionally, 90% of zoning is, is the responsibility of the zoning officer. And if a citation is needed, we are the mechanism that issues a citation with the zoning officer's name on it. So uh, I think one of the misconceptions is that we enforce the zoning, which, which uh, if you've ever read the Manistee City Zoning, uh, we, we, it would be di very difficult for us to uh, sustain that. So. And the, and the resources from this group used towards mural is because we think it's part of beautification. Is that the thought process, the philosophy? Correct. And I'm just curious, the ordinance, would that try to dictate what people do with private property? I think it would have to be, I think Probably. there's some, I think there's, I haven't read everything, okay. but I think there's some mixture in there. So I think okay. we need to look at that. Are you speaking of like Martin Salt? is willing to put a mural by their factory? Correct. They, they are doing some new improvements there, and they're going to have some, what they call silos, some new silos. Uh -huh. And what they would like to do, if this all would work, eventually would be to put the Morton Salt um, logo of when it originally started and so many things. Oh, okay, okay. But there should be rules and regulations, otherwise you can have murals. Yeah, everywhere. And yeah. Again, it'll, it'll turn into blight. And they have to be tastefully done, but you know, they already know what they would want. They would like to work with us. Sure. So <clears throat> playing on the a little devil's advocate, just hear me out. Um, if you if you say there's going to be murals everywhere you know, without the program, there isn't a program right now. So there, I mean, do you, do you see that there's a problem with existing murals right now that, that have become blighted? Because I'm just wondering if, you know what I mean? Because like, I was gonna say, where are the On buildings. Are there any murals anywhere? Mm -hmm. Where? On River Street, there used to be murals on the side of buildings. Yeah. Are there? Mm -hmm. They're not there now, right? <laughs> I don't think about it. 
I don't know. Um, I don't know. There were some great mock-ups that were done by John McCracken in this the initial. Again, this is just initial conversations. The outcome of this could be we don't go that direction, or the outcome could be we go further in that direction. So I just want to be clear that this is just conversations that we're having. And but there were some really nice mock-ups that were done that gave a great visual representation of some of the potential. Um, the the reason I say that is because it's almost like we're, we're talking about how we would allow somebody to put a mural on their own property and I don't think right now there's anything pre preventing you from doing that. I, I think we have to look at what other communities are doing and look at it. I, I understand your point. How does the government dictate what I put on my property, which is a right. very fine line. But I think we're just at the point we talked about this summer in the wintertime looking at policies, procedures, and going through things. I think what I'm hearing is we just go through it, look, read through it, and have right. Anything has to be approved by our city council. And, uh, you know, j just to be, just my understanding is we, we, could, we could think that we're going to do A, B, and C and put this thing together. And, you know, Manistee City Council could not support it just to, to manage expectations. I'm certainly not saying that's the case. And I'm certainly not saying I speak anywhere on behalf of city, the City Council. But just understanding that, that we might put something together that they have to approve and support the, the policies and things. But what I'm hearing is we're just, this is the initial... Let's look at it. Let's look and see if it's something we can do, and then figure out you know, are we going to expend resources towards it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think from our past discussions too, it's the the point of the objective of it is so that way eventually we could start uh, incorporating murals in public spaces, but they have to be done the right way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So. And not everybody's going to like it. Not everybody's going to want one. But right. it's Yeah. Sounds. Yeah, and I'm I'm certainly not saying that I'm in favor of it or for against it, but the initial conversation we had with our previous commissioner was it was a way for us to kind of bring culture to the town, right. and put a stamp on what we think it is, and that's the, the you know the side. I think the images I saw was a, a giant side of a building that's vacant right now, and what what could that be used for something you know? Mm -hmm. So really, I think fits the beautification. Again, I'm not saying that I would support something like this. Again, I'm the lays on the city, so um, my job is to answer questions and provide resources. But uh, I think that was the driving spirit back then was, is there somehow we can beautify or bring the culture of what we think the Manistee is to our community? Instead of just seeing, are there opportunities that we're missing out on the side of a the big side of a building? Can we put something else there? I know there's been conversations about the wall on First Street, and this group did a great job, especially... Uh, Commissioner Grevy, cleaning that wall up. What well, could that be a canvas in the future? These are these are just some conversations we're having. Yeah. Um, so. And murals will brand the community too. That's you have to be careful with that. I mean, the stuff John had brought to us was kind of cool. I mean, it, it fit the Victorian vibe. I mean, it's. it's kind of brand new. Yeah. I, think, I think we'd also want to kind of incorporate. Um, like any artwork into that ordinance as well, not just murals, you know, it could be wraps, could be yeah. um, like three-dimensional type mm -hmm. items like they have on First Street Wall, mm -hmm. like those fish that stick out, you know. You could do stuff like that in that, or in, include that in the ordinance that we could draft up. No. I would like to see a Morton, uh, Morton Salt, the girl with the umbrella. I would like to see a sculpture like that downtown. I mean, Morton is part of ESD. Mm -hmm. So it could go much further than just a mural. Okay. Any more discussion? Kathy? All set? I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess next item is to reschedule the October 9th, 2023. Uh, there's a conflict um, was it with city chambers. I think so. Yeah. Um, I vote for the first. <laughs> okay. So, one. Oh, it would be October 1st. No, the first week in October. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. First. The first Monday. So, okay, let's see what day that is. 
Like it's the second, October second. Oh, yeah, I guess it'd be uh, seven days before that. <laughs> <laughs> Engineers can't do math apparently. <laughs> All right. So is that a motion? Yes. I'll, I'll second. Yep. Lucas Richardson. Yep. Ellie Grevy. Yes. Mary Kay Wilkosh. Yes. Kathy Grabowski. Yes. All right. At this time, is there any public comment on any topics? Any more, Jim? Oh, because he did it out of place. <laughs> Why didn't anybody tell him? <laughs> to get gavel. Yeah, I was leaving that for you. I asked your name, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe one comment if I could. Yeah, I do encourage you to figure out how to get commissions together. Because what I observe is seems there's lots of different groups. And sometimes, you know, everybody's pulling forward together, but sometimes you get out of sync and a lot of energy kind of gets wasted. I so agree. I encourage you to figure that, that piece out. Thank you. Just for the, the minutes, do you have um, your name and address yes. so we can put it? Oh, Jeff Gordon, or Lover. Jeff Gordon. So moving forward, what we'll do is we have public comment, have him come to the microphone, so his, his well, so he, on the record, so they can hear you on the public. So thank you for your comment. That way, uh, the public listening can hear his comments. I think at council member, at meetings, they have the public comment come to the podium, name it, that way we have, other uh, comments uh, recorded. Um, so I guess for the good of the order, I do want to mention one thing. So I did receive from the city manager that we have our um, annual council report uh, scheduled as of right now for February 7th um, for the NRBC. So just like Parks Commission, I think it would be nice if everybody could attend that. Um, and I'll begin working on what we can present for that and maybe shoot around some ideas in the meantime and mm -hmm. work with Chief Glass on that too. So that's all I have. Anything? Um, I was wondering if any more thought was given to adding two more commissioners. I think that when we send around the bylaws, if that's something that you'd like to incorporate, maybe just include that in your comments. I have some passionate people that, that are interested. Then you could just leave that welcome new person. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, item number two is approval of agenda, and everybody approved it. To welcome you again. So. Okay. I never yeah, felt so welcome. Somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Anybody else have anything? Why don't you go around there? I have something, but I'll let you go around to the commissioners. You got anything? Nope. I'm good today, but thank you. Awesome. Uh, we are continuing to work towards uh, taking advantage of potential grant funds available to the, um, to the city through the land bank, the county land bank. We're continuing to work with Rachel Nelson, what that looks like. Uh, and we had reached out to two families that this group had identified months ago. Initially, we thought they could be part of that project, but we found uh, that the residences the buildings need to be vacant which was very unfortunate so I still have to follow up those families and and I I think I talked to commissioner um, that we're not gonna I mean Mary did a great job trying to find initial resources we tried these resources it doesn't look like it's gonna work out I think we need to continue and be stubborn and to try to find resources to help these families if you uh, would have them reach out to me again I have an idea for okay that. And I think it's the mentality. When this group identified, and we, they set the parameters, everyone set the parameters of uh, what private property families they want to help. But I think we have to be stubborn and just keep pushing forward and keep helping out. And um, so it was unfortunate that this program couldn't benefit them, and we still have to follow up with them. But we are trying to find ways to benefit um, 
residents or businesses in the city of Manistee. It's quite labor intensive. There's a timeline on it. We have to have the application in by January 31st, which means we're getting bids and letters of interest. Uh, the two city properties would qualify. And I think at, to date we have one other uh, residence uh, for demolition who's shown interest. Again, we're focusing these on residences that we think uh, need to be demolished because quite frankly, um, those are the ones that take the most time. And when we have, we talk about police officers enforcing blight, that is what eats up the majority of their time. And it's very, very time consuming for these houses that are, it's gonna take more money to flip the house and to restore it than it's gonna cost you're gonna get out of the house. And so uh, that's a very frustrating part of this enforcement. Um, we have one house, well, actually it's technically two houses in town that within two years, they've gone through at least six owners. And so when you talk about, well, um, you just need to get a court order to demolish the house. Well, you have to have due process and proper notification of owners. So when you, the, the police are in charge of that, they have to track down the speed in which this house has changed hands. Um, and I think there's probably some value in having Safe Built come in and talk to this group about what Safe Built does for the city and how that fits into blight or if it does fit, fits into blight as well as the city attorney come in and talk about what the blight enforcement process is and litigation. You know, I think the vision for this group was uh, in, the, in, in the warm months, we're going to get out there and do things, but in the, in the colder months, we can't do community service. Let's bring people in to educate this commission on what that process looks like. Uh, I think there's some, some uh, large value there. So anyways, I'm going to work if this commission wants people to come in and talk to them about blight enforcement and safe built, what that does. And then um, I think having Tracy Davis here for just to explain to the rest of the commission what she does too. I think sure. Be valuable. And uh, just know that we're working forward. It's very labor and time intensive, but working forward to see how we can get property owners interested in utilizing the land bank for demolition of their houses. And so again. I would suspect if you live in a neighborhood and you've had a house that's set, that should be have, should have been demolished for the last 20 years, hopefully that's the, the message we get from them. I, I suspect that it will, it will be. That's the most frustrating thing that I see uh, in terms of what really impacts a neighborhood. Uh, yeah, it's the trash, but the more difficult portion, labor intensive for our officers, is how do we get these structures demolished that need to be demolished, especially when the owner says, I'm not going to demolish it, I'm still going to invest in it. it has, have been saying that for years, right? So know that we're working on that. Uh, if there's any members of the NRBC that want to be part of that, Lucas has been part of that, that the grant process. He attends the meetings. Um, get with Lucas. Today we have a meeting at 1030 uh, for the Click Fix, which is a reporting site for all the city services through an app. We're working on strategies. Is what what is there a piece in there for the NRBC? And I think that there might be, whether it be reporting process or what it might be with this group. But I would encourage that this group to take advantage of that. Um, uh, Any way we can get information out there, and just just a real quick snapshot is it's a it's an app that you download that you use to report something to a city service, um, like crime, speeders, leaf pickup, anything. Uh, just again it's a way for us to connect with the community instead of having to pick up the phone and call because to be honest that sometimes deters people right mm -hmm. i don't want to pick up the phone and call because they're busy down there whatever it might be just trying to find a, a, a way to engage our, our the public so we're working on those two items and we're encouraging our officers to continue through the winter months to see about demolitions and um and so again I, my message to this group is it's when it comes to demolition, these properties that are uh, that need to come down, it's very labor intensive for the police department, as we're finding out. Um, we appreciate what you do. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and again, we'll just we're going to continue. We have to be the word I use is stubborn to find ways to help our families that we've identified. So, uh, Commissioner Wilcox has done a great job. Just because we just because we get a no doesn't mean we stop. That's that's my philosophy. So yeah. I mean, nobody else reached out to that 
those two homeowners for stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I, I, I see that as still part, partly a win. I mean, mm -hmm. we put some effort towards it, and um, which reminds me to if Mary, if you could send me the link to USDA for that, mm -hmm. um, I think we should put that at least on the web page for now too. I'll have to ask them if okay. because there's not just a specific part of that. So let me see what they like to send. Okay. <clears throat> and so I, 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 I thought about putting the actual PDF of the documents on there, but that's ever changing, I'm sure. So yeah, so I'm not so sure figured they want that. No, I was thinking like a link to the, yeah. wherever to download the most recent. Yeah, I'll ask them what they want to. Okay. So that's just my, uh, those are my go to the order items. Okay. Awesome. Thank Could you. you send me some stuff you were going to, because I like, your boulders are so big. And I just have a minute. What's so big? Oh, folders. Oh, I just keep <laughs> And when you're talking like about two houses, like I'm, I'm lost. Yeah, I can. I, I meant to some, uh, send you a summary, but if I did not do that yet, I will do that summary of what we've done thus that's, far. That's fine. Yeah. No rush. Okay. I just want to be more knowledgeable. Have you watched the, the meetings that we've had so far since we started? That might be helpful yeah, too. That would be very That'd probably be the most helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. Yeah. And they're all on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. probably the city City's too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, next scheduled meeting is Monday, January 9th, 9 a.m. If there's no more comment at this time, I'd make a motion to adjourn. Second. You second, whoever. <laughs> Do you turn this off then, Kelly? Yeah.